Hold on, this is wild. It really is. No, I mean, this fundamentally changes everything we thought we knew about the pace of this, this technological war. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's the moment where uh, technological agility clashes head on with raw industrial scale. Yeah. We're looking at a manufacturing plan for 2025 that demands an immediate and very high tech response. Absolutely. The headline is confirmed. Ukraine's new tech shreds Russian bombs. We are jumping straight into the intelligence reports detailing this exact clash, a new hunter system designed to negate one of the conflict's most destructive weapons. Right. And look, if you're following every development on the front line, you know how crucial this is. So stick with us. The tension here is it's palpable. Because the specific details we're analyzing, briefed just on Sunday, November 30th, 2025, they present a genuine dilemma. Ukraine's defense forces are hitting critical milestones right now. Right now, they're successfully destroying these guided bombs at a breakneck speed. They are. But, and this is the massive cliffhanger, the other side is gearing up for a 2025 production surge. So staggering, it demands immediate attention. Yeah. We're talking numbers that force a complete rethink of air defense strategy. A total rethink. And we will get into the specifics of this new hunter weapon and how it might just be the answer to this, uh, this incoming tidal wave of munitions. So our mission today is really to unpack the latest from the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine and from the defense intelligence, the HUR. Okay. We're connecting their reports about testing these new counter systems with these, frankly, massive production figures projected for next year. Okay, let's unpack this. Let's start with the threat itself. Mm -hmm. For months, guided aerial bombs have been, well, they've been cited as a major ongoing challenge. A huge challenge. And to really get why, you have to understand these aren't just, you know, simple bombs being dropped from directly overhead. No, not at all. They're often older, massive Soviet era FAB bombs. And what they do is they fit them with these relatively cheap universal guidance and correction modules. You might hear them called UMPK kits. Right, which turns a standard gravity bomb into a standoff glide munition. Precisely. This allows the pilot to launch the bomb from a safe distance, often far, far outside the range of most existing short to medium range air defense systems. So they're cheap, they're deadly, and they require a really sophisticated and expensive interceptor to take them down. Exactly. And that cost exchange ratio is what this is all about. And the context for these new reports is key. This all came out of a high-level monthly meeting on military capabilities. They were specifically discussing how to enhance attack effectiveness during these huge missile and drone campaigns. Yes, they're clearly looking for volume, range, and impact. The ability to just hammer entrenched positions and to do it cheaply. And when you say volume, yep. that's where the figures from Ukraine's HUR, well, that's where the alarm bells really start to ring. They ring very, very loudly. This is the part that just sets the stage for everything else. According to these defense intelligence reports, Russia plans to produce at least 120,000 guided aerial bombs in 2025. 120,000. Just just sit with that number for a second. It's okay. hard to even process, let alone defend against. I can't even picture it. This isn't just a marginal increase in military output. This is shifting a significant chunk of their entire industrial base into creating munitions. Full stop. The rationale seems pretty clear then. Oh, it's crystal clear. Attrition by affordability. They are banking on the idea that the sheer volume of cheap glide bombs will overwhelm the expensive, limited supply of sophisticated interceptors. And it's not just the bombs. The briefing also had updated numbers for drones. Right. They intend to manufacture at least 70,000 drones in 2025. Oh. And the specifics matter here. 30,000 of those are slated to be copies of the Iranian Shahid drones. So you combine the two. 70,000 drones with a huge chunk being Shahed's plus 120,000 guided bombs. The scale is just immense. It immediately raises the strategic stakes. This forces a shift from just defending key sites to needing something like, like, blanket automated air superiority. It's a fascinating problem. And it forces a major test of the whole air defense architecture. We have to ask you, do you believe those 2025 production numbers are even achievable? Drop your thoughts in the comments. We really want to know what you think. And to counter that potential wave, we need to immediately pivot to the current defense scorecard, what Ukraine's defense forces are doing right now. This is where it gets good because they're proving that advanced tech can, in fact, win out over sheer mass. The destruction rate, even against what they're facing today, has been impressive. It's been intense. The general staff reported that Ukrainian defenders have destroyed over 100 guided aerial bombs in the past month alone. A hundred in one month. 
That is a significant success rate. That's 100 high-impact weapons taken off the battlefield in a very short time. And to put that in context, the Air Force of Ukraine destroyed up to 100 Russian bombs just between September and November this year. So the data shows the rate of interception is clearly, it's accelerating as new defensive measures come online. It has to be. But destroying over 100 in one month, I mean, that's a testament to the current systems, but it also shows you the relentless tempo they're facing. It does. And the success isn't just limited to the bombs. We saw it with the drones, too. Russian forces recently deployed 138 Shahid drones. And the majority, a very high percentage of those, mm. were shot down. A very high percentage, yes. Using a combination of mobile fire groups and their existing air defense assets. Yeah. They're adapting constantly. They have to maintain this momentum, though. If they're destroying 100 bombs a month now, what happens when those 2025 production goals potentially hit? They'll need a system that can handle, what, 10 times that volume? It requires a fundamental technological leap, not just an improvement, a leap. Which brings us to the Hunter system. Exactly. So this is where the cutting-edge tech comes in to meet this threat. During that military meeting on November 30, the key response they talked about was introducing and testing new countermeasures, new weapon systems. And the reports focus heavily on finding a dedicated, reliable, and this is critical cost-effective answer to the guided bomb problem. Because you can't just keep firing a multi-million dollar missile at a bomb that costs, what, a few hundred thousand dollars to make? You lose that economic war very quickly. So the reports say that new systems designed specifically for this are currently being tested in the field. This isn't a concept on a drawing board. No, this is an active deployment, an evolution happening in real time. And what's fascinating is how they describe it. The system is specifically called a hunter for guided bombs. A hunter. That terminology suggests it's not passive. It's an active search and neutralization capability. It does. It likely targets the most vulnerable parts of the bomb. So if you think about how these bombs work, they rely heavily on GPS and INS modules for that glide phase. So what kind of system hunts a bomb mid-glide? That's the billion-dollar question. It implies either a new kind of kinetic interceptor that's way cheaper than current missiles, mm. or maybe a powerful electronic warfare system, something that can spoof or just disrupt the bomb's navigation. The latter seems highly plausible. A key detail that was reported back in late October is that the development of this hunter system is in collaboration with NATO. Oh, okay. That's a major detail. It is. It suggests advanced, maybe specialized, shared technology is being integrated. NATO is heavily invested in improving short-range air defense and advanced EW capabilities. That would be the perfect counter. It changes everything if this is a joint effort. If the Hunter is an effective EW system, it doesn't need to fire expensive munitions. It could, in theory, disrupt hundreds of glide paths at the same time. And beyond the Hunter, that November 30 meeting covered a whole suite of new tech. They're looking at a multi-layered approach. What else was on the list? Strike drones for deep operations, interceptor drones for cheap, localized air defense, ground-based robotic systems, even combat modules mounted on robotic platforms. That's a comprehensive strategy. It's not just one magic bullet. They're looking to bring in autonomous and robotic platforms across the board. Recognizing that human capacity is finite, but the industrial threat they face could be exponential. So what are the strategic implications here? If the Hunter system is successfully tested and deployed, that changes the operational picture for both sides almost immediately. Oh, absolutely. If Ukraine has an effective maybe non-kinetic way to neutralize these glide bombs, then Russian forces are suddenly forced back to the drawing board. They have to find a countermeasure to the countermeasure. Exactly. Do they invest scarce resources into hardening the guidance kits on their bombs against EW? Yeah. Or do they have to pivot to a new weapon system entirely? It's a constant escalating game of high-tech chess. Which brings us back to the core point. This is a race. A race between affordable mass production and agile technological interception. The ability to counter cheap, high-volume weapons is now paramount, especially with those 2025 targets, 120,000 bombs. It boils down to economics, really. If you can reliably stop their most mass-produced weapon with a system that's cheaper than the weapon itself, you've won a major victory. You force them back to more expensive, less frequent attacks or systems they just can't produce in the same volume. The Hunter isn't just defensive, it's an economic weapon. And that realization is going to define military planning globally for the next decade. I think so. The strategic environment has shown that even the most sophisticated militaries have to prioritize developing high-tech, low-cost counters to high-volume, low-cost threats. 
The days of relying solely on expensive missiles for every central threat, those days are ending. The future of war flight is right at that intersection, so here's something to think about. If guided bombs are neutralized by hunter systems, what's next? What's the next low-cost, high-impact weapon that militaries will rush to develop? A technological leap always begets a counter-leap. You've been listening to J&J's Military Report, where we analyze the latest in military strategy, global defense, and advanced weaponry. We'll catch you next time.